Hello everyone, myself Mohammad Ramiz and I welcome you all on behalf of Saraswat International Academy. Today in this session, we are going to learn the part 7 of chapter number 1 that is Nature and Significance of Management. So students, in the previous session we have studied about the different functions of management. We have discussed in detail about planning, organizing and staffing. And today in this session we are going to learn about the next function of management that is directing. Direction means to guide and to supervise the employees for the accomplishment of the objective. So here it is explained that what is direction. A simple definition is given here. Direction is about to guide, to give the guidelines to the employees. It is very important. The main work is done at the bottom level of management and to them, to the employees, to the different subordinates, it is very necessary that the supervisor and the different authority person should give the guideline about how to accomplish the goal. They have to give the different guidance to the employees so that they can work properly and align with the goal of the firm. And it is also necessary for the supervisor to supervise the work of employees that whatever the guidelines is given by the different authority in the same way the employees are working or not. In order to achieve predetermined objective, predetermined objective means the objective which we decide in the starting of business. It is very important to direct and supervise the employees of an organization effectively. So here it is said to achieve the goal. It is very important to direct and to give the guideline to the employees and it is important to supervise the employees that whatever the guidelines are given is properly and effectively followed by the employees or not. In a business unit planning is done after defining objective. An ideal organization structure is formed, raw material, machinery are purchased and staff is appointed. In spite of it, all this effort become useless if the superior fail to provide proper direction to employees or worker. Pay attention over here. Here it is said that in a business unit, planning is done perfectly. Okay, the objective is decided and to achieve the objective planning is done. And then you set up the proper organization. Idle organization means you have set up a proper departments, proper managers you have appointed. Okay, then you have purchased the raw material and machineries. Then you have appointed the staff also. In spite of all this function, if the superior, the head person fail to give the proper direction to the employees, then all of your efforts are become what are, are will become useless. So it is very important to, uh, to give the proper guideline to the what to the different employees. Other management functions are worthless without direction. So you, here you have seen now that planning is properly done, organization is, structure is formed, then staff is appointed. But if you fail to give the proper guideline, then all the other functions will become useless. Direction includes various activities like to direct the subordinate, to give them the guideline and to supervise them and to give the orders and instruction. So these all are the what these all are the activities which are included in direction which are the activities to direct the subordinate to supervise them to give them the order and to give them instructions to fix the work to motivate the work to provide leadership okay it is important function that to motivate the work employees and to provide them the leadership okay the workers need the leader to direct them. Direction is a continuous process. Direction is a which process? Continuous process. All the functions of management, once same characteristics will be there. Planning is continuous for process. Organization is a continuous process. Staffing is a continuous process. Same way the direction is also a continuous process. It is required at every level of management. Direction is required what? At every level of management. We will revise the direction. Pay attention. Planning is done properly. Organization, idle organization structure is set up. 
machineries, materials are purchased and staff is appointed. But still, if you fail to direct your employees, then all your efforts are useless. Okay. Other management functions like planning, organizing, staffing, all are useless, worthless if you fail to give the proper guideline to the employees. Then here it is said that what activities are included in direction. You can see that various activities such as to direct the subordinate, to supervise them, how they are working as per the guideline or not, to give them the orders and instruction and to fix the work, which employee have to do, which work, in what time, okay, and to motivate the worker and to provide them the leadership, okay. See the next, direction is a which process, continuous process and it is required at every level of management. Now the next function of management that is controlling. Control is the function of maintaining balance among efforts, results, resources and objectives. So controlling is the function which maintain the balance among efforts, result, resource and objective. Pay attention, here we will discuss this with an example. If you set up your target for the examination around 80% and in the first term you are getting around 75 so in the next term you will get an idea that you are lacking behind of 5 percentage and then you will look out and you will analyze which activities are lacking in which subject you are getting less marks what is the limitations why that 5 percent was lacking so you will find out the solution and then again in the second term you will work hard to achieve your goal okay so that analysis of the limitation that why you are lacking behind in that scoring five percent okay that activity is controlling activity so in the firm also the goals are decided that in this month we have to sell this much and we have to get this much profit but if the firm fail to achieve that much profit if the firm is not able to gain that much profit then firm will do the analysis where they are lacking and they will find out the solution for it and they will work on it so this is about controlling controlling is an activity which balances among the efforts the firm do and the result and resources and for the achievement of objective controlling is the last function of management Okay, so here you have to remember controlling is the what? Last function of management, which is the first function, planning. So you have to remember planning is the first function, controlling is the last function. The function of controlling is to see whether all the business activities are done with the conformity of planning or not. So here it is said that the function of controlling is to see that all the activities, business activities are done as per the plan or not. As per traditional concept, traditional concept means old concept, controlling means, so we will see that what is the meaning of controlling as per that old concept, look, to have the restriction on employees activities, so in the traditional concept, controlling is about to keep restriction, pabandi lagana, on what, on employees activity, to have strict approach, to have which approach with the employees strict approach with the employees then provision of punishment or fine in case of employee making mistake so here it is said that punishment and fine is given to the employees if he do any mistake then transferring the employees and withholding their promotion and all this and all this thing which we have seen from year to year it shows that the traditional concept of the controlling is a which approach is a negative approach. Controlling is a positive concept in the modern time. So in the traditional time we have seen the controlling was a negative concept, negative approach. And in the modern era, in the modern time, the controlling is a positive concept. Controlling is corrective activity. So the example in which we have seen that you have targeted 80% and the result was 75% then you have searched out that what is the mistake and you have taken the correction 
corrective actions so that you can achieve the goal of 80% in the next examination. So it shows that controlling is a which activity? Corrective activity. Because the function of controlling is not to restrict the activities, is not to restrict the activity but to direct them in the right direction, but to direct the employees in the right direction if these activities are not done as per planning. Once again, pay attention. The function of controlling is not to restrict the activities of the employee but to direct them in the right direction if the activities are not done as per planning. The function of controlling is to see that mistakes made in the past are not repeated in the future. So the function of controlling is to see that whatever the mistakes we have done in the past, okay, that should not be repeated in future. Our next topic is coordination. Coordination is required at every stage of management. Coordination is required at what? Every stage of management. Coordination is necessary from planning. Planning which is the first stage of management to controlling. Controlling is the last stage of management. So here it proves that coordination is a function which is required at every stage of management from planning to controlling. Coordination gives a sort of assurance. Assurance means coordination gives us the security for the what? For the accomplishment of objective. No work remains incomplete or no work is duplicated and thus the work become easy. So here it is said that uh, no work remain incomplete and no, no work is duplicated means no work is repeated if there is a coordination and coordination help for the achievement of business objective. Now we will see the meaning of coordination. To bring coordination and harmony among the different functions carried out by different department in the business unit is called coordination. So coordination is about that to bring the harmony among the different functions of management from planning to controlling in all the functions of management the proper coordination should be there like whatever we have planned for that a proper organization should be shut up then according to the organization the number of the sta staff should be selected then controlling should be there okay so in all the functions of management the coordination should be there another thing is that in the different department in the different department of the business unit there should be a coordination like a sales department should inform to production department that how much production unit they have to make so that the resources should not be waste okay if there is a sale of around 2000 unit per month then sales department should inform to the production department then that 2000 or 2200 production should be done so that resources should not be wasted and buffer stock will not be there now we will learn the different characteristics of coordination the first point coordination is required for all the activities right from planning to controlling therefore management process is not possible without coordination so here it shows the importance of coordination coordination is required from the first function of management that is from planning to the last function of management that is controlling now see the second point coordination is required at every level of management there are three levels of management that is top level middle level and bottom level and there should be a coordination among all this level for the achievement for the accomplishment of the goal of the firm there should be a proper flow of direction from top level to the bottom level and there should be a coordination in report sending from bottom level to top level so coordination is essential between the different functions of management and at every level of management now the third point success of coordination depends upon effective communication this point is very important that for having the coordination it is very necessary that proper communication should be there if any of the information 
is miscommunicated or misinterpreted then coordination cannot be maintained now we are going to learn the fourth point that is coordination is not possible without cooperation cooperation of employees engaged in different activities is necessary to maintain the coordination among various activities of the organization so here the importance of cooperation is shown that without cooperation there will be no coordination now what is cooperation that we have to learn cooperation means there should be a harmonious and good relation among the different employees of the firm and between the different departmental head or you can also tell them as a manager if one of the manager is not having the good relation with the other departmental head then there will be a miscommunication and the business goal will not be achieved so here it is said that for the coordination cooperation should be there and employees engage in different business activities in the firm okay they should maintain the coordination in various activities to achieve the firm goal now the fifth point optimum utilization of business resources is possible due to coordination optimum utilization of business resource first of all you have to know what is the resource the things which are helpful to us in business that is a resource for example raw or machinery raw material these are the different resources of the firm so here it is said that if there is a coordination then the resources of the business will be used in a best possible manner there will be no wastage of resource now the next point sixth point coordination is a part of every activity of management in every activity of the management there should be a coordination therefore coordination is considered what as a soul of management you have to remember this for the mcq and one line coordination is considered as what soul of the management now we are going to learn the importance of coordination first point coordination makes management functions like planning organizing directing controlling effective so this we have learned from the very starting from the definition itself we have seen that coordination is necessary from the first step that is from planning to the last step that is controlling so coordination is essential and necessary in every function of management and it helps to make the to implement the different functions of management in a best possible way then second coordination make possible all the business activity in a easy manner so with the help of coordination the different activities of the business is run in a easy manner now the third point coordination leaves work incomplete and no possibility of duplication of work so here it says that by the help of the coordination all the works of the business are completed on time and duplication of work is not done repetition of work is not done now the fourth point coordination maintain the what harmony among various departments of management because of coordination there is always a good relation among the different department among the different departments of management now fifth point coordination enable make able to maintain a balance between order and time of business activities performed by various department so here it is said that because of the coordination the different activities of business are performed by various department in proper time and order as per the decided okay as per the planning the different work is done of the business activity perfectly with the what with the coordination among the different departmental head now the sixth point 
coordination leads toward the accomplishment towards the achievement of the predecided objective the objective which we decided in the starting of the firm that objective is achieved with the help of with the help of coordination let's discuss the importance of coordination in short once again first point coordination makes management functions all the management functions done effectively then in second point coordination make possible of all the business activity in a which manner in a easy manner third point coordination is helping for completion of all work and duplication of work is not done fourth point coordination maintain the harmony and good relation among the different department of management fifth point because of the help of coordination the predecided goal of the business is achieved and the different departmental activities are performed in a well manner and the sixth point coordination leads towards the what accomplishment towards the achievement of predecided objective students till the topic of levels of management i have given you the different question answers now two three topics are left and the chapter will be over and then after i will give you the question answers of this chapter